In this video, I'm going to show how you can add an onboarding tour to your Bubble app. You can see here when the user lands on the page, they're being brought through the key steps involved in using the app. I'm going to show how you can add in back skip buttons and even customize the colors and the feel of the onboarding tour to suit your own needs. The first thing you're going to need to do is go to the plugin section of your Bubble dashboard and install the A plus onboarding product tour plugin. You can see you have it installed, so you can find it by clicking on that button and searching for the plugin. It says private here, but it is publicly available. Once you have that plugin installed, what you should see is that you'll have the ability to drop this product tour element onto the page. And you're going to need to do that. So grab that, and you can really drop it anywhere you want on the page. You'll see you get this icon showing up. I'm just going to put it down at the bottom here. It is important to say that this isn't actually going to show up on the page itself. If I go to preview, what you will see is that that little flag icon there, it doesn't show up on the actual app. The next thing you're going to want to do is go to the settings tab of your bubble editor and under general, you're going to need to scroll right to the bottom and check this advanced option here, the expose the option to add an ID attribute to HTML elements. You want to make sure that that's checked. The reason we want to make sure that's checked is if we go back to our editor and we choose any element, so let's choose the restart tour button. What you'll see now is we have the option to add an ID attribute to this element. And this is going to be what lets the product tour plugin know what steps in the tour to stop off at. We'll come back to that in a second. Uh, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to go to my workflow tab and I'm going to say when the page is loaded. We should have the option now under plugins, or sorry, not under plugins but under element actions, we should have the option to add step in a product tour. So we're gonna select that, and you'll see here that we have a number of options. So you can see it's referencing the product tour element we dropped on the page. We're gonna call this step title step one out of five. We're gonna call the step description. For now, we're going to call it something like, this is the first step. And then you'll see they're asking for an element ID. And this is what I was talking about a second ago when we were talking about the ID attributes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my editor and I'm going to set this uh, restart tour button here. I'm going to give this the ID attribute step one. I'm just going to copy this. Then we're going to go back into our editor and we're going to put in that there. And once we reload the app, what we'll see is nothing's going to happen. And the reason nothing's happening is because once we've added a step to a tour, we also need to add this action here under element actions, start a product tour. So now if we refresh our bubble app, what we'll see is straight away, you can see here we're getting this highlight on the elements that we referenced. Because there's only one step in this tour, it's done straight away. Now let's go back to our editor and start building out a more comprehensive tour. So the first thing I'd like to do is rather than hone in on any specific element, what I'd like to do is just kind of have, you know, a welcome to the product message on the page as a whole. So the way you can do that is if you just leave this element ID field here blank, what it's going to do is it's just going to show a general message. Um, so what I'm going to say is welcome to this fantastic SaaS app. We're going to make this a fairly short tour, so let's give this a title, step one out of three. And then let's add another step. So we won't start a product tour just yet. We're going to go to element actions, add a step in a product tour, and we'll call this step title two out of three. And we'll have to decide what exactly we want to highlight. This is a demo app, but you know, think of it as a pretty simple CRM or employee management app. Uh, and a lot of the good stuff happens in this repeating group area here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose this repeating group element. And I'm going to give this the ID attribute uh, step two. We'll copy that. And then in our workflow, we're going to reference that just there. And for the step description, I'll say this is where a lot of the good stuff happens. Finally, I'm going to reference this add employee button. So assume you want to add one more employee to the table here. We'll just give this the element step three or the ID attribute, I should say, step three. Element actions, add a step in a product tour. Uh, we'll call that step three. 
we'll give the title to be step three out of three. You can put in whatever you want here. It doesn't have to be step X out of X or whatever. And we'll say this is how you add employee records. And then one last step, we have to start that product tour. So again, element actions, and let's go to start a product tour. Refresh the page. And you can see here, as we're introduced to it, we're not really honing in any one specific element. We're just giving a general welcome message to the app. Click on next, and you'll see then that we're highlighting that repeating group area. We choose next again, we get to step three out of three. And you can see this is how you add employee records. So now the user has completed the tour, but what if they want to restart the tour? You know, at the moment, the only way of triggering the product tour is by refreshing the page and going through it step by step. And if they want to go through it again, there's no way to do that really at the moment, short of refreshing, which isn't ideal. So what we can do is you'll see here, I have a restart button, restart tour button at the side of this dashboard. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a workflow on it. Let's get rid of that for a second. Restart tour, start out a workflow. And again, we're going to go down to element actions. And this time, instead of adding a step or stopping a product tour or any of those ones, what we're going to do is we're just going to say start a product tour and we're going to leave that reference as element A. So refresh our page. We're going to get the tour pop up as usual. But if we want to restart the tour, you'll see this time we click on that and we get to restart the tour. You'll notice at the moment we have this back button and we have the next button when there's another step in the tour, but we can't skip the tour you know, at least not in any nice way. So one thing you can do is, I know there's some customization options on the steps themselves. So for example, you can change around this padding, you can play around with these as you like, but you can also do quite a few customizations using the element. So for example, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to allow the user to skip the tour. So we'll tick that, refresh our page. And now instead of going through step by step, you can skip the tour. If you want to get rid of that back button and they have to go forward step by step, which I probably wouldn't recommend, but the option is there. You'll see again, you can't go back and you can skip the whole tour or you can just go to the next step. In terms of other customizations options, you can change the primary color. So at the moment we have this bluey color. If we wanted to change that to a red, refresh the page. And this time you can see here the color at the top there and also on this button here is now in red. I'm going to change that back just because red doesn't really fit. And then there's some other customizations you can do as well in terms of changing the button for the skip, the back, and the completion of the tour. So let's just say instead of saying done, let's say we wanted to put in tour complete. We'll see that come up as the last step in the tour. And you can see tour complete. So on this app, one thing that happens when you click on the delete icon is you get a pop-up, you know, essentially saying, are you sure you want to delete this record? And this can require some kind of custom steps when we're doing the tour. So what we're going to do is, you know, at the moment that isn't showing up in the tour, but let's say we wanted to show that pop-up in the tour. So what we're going to do is we're going to go and choose our pop-up and then we're going to pick uh, the group in the pop-up itself. So what we'll do is we're going to put all of these elements here in a group. And then we're going to give this group itself an ID attribute. So we're going to call it pop-up. We'll copy that. And then much like we've done before, we're simply going to include this in an, an action. So we'll say add a step to a product tour. It's going to be a pop-up and step description is just going to be this is the pop-up and if we were to leave it like that uh, let me just quickly put this in we'll do three out of four we'll do two out of four and then we'll do four out of four So let's do a quick preview of that because it won't quite work like you might want it to. So step one, step two, step three, this is the pop-up, but they're not actually showing the pop-up. You know, there's no pop-up there. So 
what we're going to do is, first of all, I noticed a quick mistake with the first one. It should be one out of four. What we're going to do is we're going to create another event. And it's going to be when a product tour goes to a step. And then this is only going to be when this product tour current step index is and number three. Why am I saying number three? Well, if we go back to when our page is loaded, first step is the welcome, second is the repeating group, and then third is when we want to show the pop-up. So when it goes to step three, what we want to do is we want to show an element, and the element we want to show is the pop-up. So I'll just show you what happens. Step one out of four, two out of four, three out of four, and we're showing it, and then it's referencing the group in the pop-up. Now, we need to do one more thing, because if you click Next, you're on step four out of four, and the pop-up is still there. So what we're going to do to deal with that is we're going to use a very similar approach. We're going to say when product tour goes to a step, and the step in this case is going to be current step index is four, we're going to hide the pop-up. Fresher app. And you can see now step one, step two, step three with the pop-up. And then step four, it's hidden, tour complete. I want to show one last thing, and that's how you can actually let the user interact with the demo. So when you click this add employee button, you get this kind of input box where, you know, we can add an employee's name. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to create one more step in the tour. I'm going to go to the design tab first of all, and find that pop-up and then a group in this pop-up the id attribute you can see here is called add employee so we're going to add one more step to the tour and we're going to give the id element id add employee we'll call this bonus step and we'll just say this is where you add employee records now again this isn't a pop-up so we're going to have to do a similar thing like we did for Step three, we're going to say when a product tour goes to step, and this case is when this product tour's current step index is five, we're going to show an element, and the element we're showing is a create employee pop-up. Now, this isn't going to be much good to us yet, but I just want to go through it. Okay, so a four, and then what we really want is for the user to actually be able to add the employee name John Simmons into this input box during the tour doesn't happen at the moment so what we can do to get around that is we can say when a product tour goes to step five what we can do is first of all we're going to add a pause and it doesn't matter too much what value you put in there and then we're going to set the focus on the input so we'll say set focus to an input element that's the only input element so therefore it gets that let's refresh our demo step one two three Four, and then the bonus step and you can see here because of that pause and action we can actually type into this box so basically what we want next is for the tour to continue once the user has satisfied this request here so once I've typed John Simmons into the input box or Simons I should say then it's going to go on to the next step so what I'm going to do first of all is we're going to add one more step to the tour And this is just going to be a kind of tour is over. You finished the tour. We're going to leave the element ID blank because again, this is the last step in the tour. So again, we'll refresh and go through this one more time. Two, three, four, bonus step. And you can see we can type in here. And then when we go to the next, the tour is complete. So. What we want to do is we want to trigger the tour going to the very last step once that name has been typed in. So what we're going to do, say, when it goes to step five, we're setting the focus to the employee name. And then we're saying when the condition is true, and the condition is going to be only when input employees names value is John Simmons Simons then we're going to go to next step in a product tour
So let's try that out. Okay, bonus, you can see the pause there. So let's type in John Simons. And you can see then it goes to the next step. What we should do there is we should really hide the pop-up when it goes to the last step. So let's just do that for completeness sake. So when uh, a product tour goes to a step, and this product tour step index is six, um, then we're going to want to hide that pop-up. Okay, last run of this. Okay, we're in this part, and we'll type in John Simons. You finish the tour. So that's how you can allow the users to interact with the tour itself. Hope this has been useful. I am going to leave the editor to this page on public, so you will be able to view it. I'll also have a link to the plugin page itself on the dashboard there. So check either of those out if you'd like, or feel free to ask me any questions in the comment section below.